everyone. Welcome to a special story time in honor of Public Power Week. Today we are reading The Magic School Bus and the Electric Field Trip. So find a spot to be comfy and let's get ready to read together. The Magic School Bus and the Electric Field Trip, written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Bruce Deacon. It looked like rain on the day Miss Frizzle decided to teach our class about electricity. She gave us books, she showed us videos, and she helped us do experiments. As usual, the Frizz was excited about science. Every once in a while, Miss Frizzle looked out the window and murmured to herself, she should be here any minute. Who should be here, we wondered, as we made a list of everything in our classroom that uses electricity. Just then, a red-haired girl cartwheeled into the room. Hello, Aunt Valerie, said the girl, kissing Miss Frizzle on the cheek. My niece, Dottie Frizzle, is visiting today, said the Frizz. Dottie, we're learning about electricity. Dottie seemed excited about science, just like the Frizz. Ms. Frizzle took out a pointer and said, Class, to understand electricity, we must understand atoms. Here is a giant model of an atom. She pointed to the outer part of the atom model. These tiny parts of the atom are called electrons, she said. Most of the time, electrons stay with their own atom, continued the Frizz, but sometimes electrons get pulled away. They leave one atom and jump to the next. They make a stream that runs from atom to atom. This stream is called electric current. Outside, the sky got darker and darker by the minute, and big raindrops started plopping down. Ms. Frizzle picked up a roll of electrical wire. I am peeling off some of the plastic insulation to show you the copper wire inside, she said. Frizzy said that one way to make electric current is to move a magnet near a wire. We made a tiny power plant in our classroom. We were making electric current. Our mini power plant can move one little needle, but the city power plant sends enough electricity for our whole town. Just then, lightning flashed and thunder cracked outside. The lights in our room flickered and went out. All the appliances stopped running. There's no electricity, someone yelped. We're experiencing a blackout, said the Frizz. Let's find out what happened. Soon we were riding on the old school bus, trying to find out what had caused the blackout. It wasn't long before we saw the problem. The lightning had hit a tree and knocked it down. The falling tree had broken a power line. Sparks were flying everywhere. Help! Let's get out of here, we yelled. The Frizz didn't waste a minute. She made a U-turn and drove away. We looked back and saw electrical workers arriving. They were going to fix the problem. Up ahead was the town's power plant. It looked like a city of buildings. Inside those buildings is the equipment that makes electricity, class, Ms. Frizzle told us. Ooh, let's visit the power plant now, suggested Ms. Frizzle's niece. What a wonderful idea, Dottie, crowed the Frizz. Hang on, everyone. When we arrived at the plant, Ms. Frizzle gave us heat-proof suits and said, We'll begin our tour by observing the fuel supply. She pushed a little button on the dashboard and the bus changed into a dump truck. Making a delivery, Miss Frizzle yelled. The dump truck tipped up and we went tumbling down the coal chute. We landed in the coal bin and slid right into a furnace of flames. Let's see what all this heat is used for, said Miss Frizzle. Overhead, there was a metal pipe with water in it. The fire was making the water boil, and the boiling water was turning into steam. Hold hands, everyone, yelled the Frizz. She jumped up to the pipe, pulling us along. In a second, our whole class was inside the steam pipe. 
The steam was traveling at high speed, and we were too. Now we'll learn what all this steam is used for class, called Miss Frizzle. We steamed along through the pipe and into the next room in the power plant. There was only one thing in the room, an enormous machine called a turbine. It had blades like a fan, and when the steam pushed on the blades, the turbine spun around. The turbine made a metal shaft spin too. We spun around the shaft and slid along to the next part of the power plant. Let's go look at what all this spinning is used for, said the frizz cheerfully. We were too dizzy to reply. The shaft led us to the generator, the part of the plant that actually makes electricity. The generator was really big, but it worked just like the little one we had made in school. On the outside were coils of wire. On the inside was a magnet. The shaft turned the magnet and the moving magnet made electric current run in the wire. Then the current flowed into a power line or large wire leading out of the plant. Next, we'll observe what all this electricity is used for, said the frizz. Suddenly, we began to get smaller and smaller and smaller until we could fit inside the power line. We got even smaller. Now we could fit between the spaces in the wire. Electrons were jumping all around us, making current. We followed the frizz from the power plant through the lines toward our town dodging electrons as we went. On the way, we passed through transformers, devices that made the voltage in the wire higher or lower. Higher voltage helps the current travel the long distance from the plant to the places that will use the electricity. Lower voltages are used in factories and big businesses. Still lower voltages are used in small buildings and homes. Where are we going? Someone asked. We're on our way to a light bulb. The frizz answered calmly. We were moving down the power line when Ms. Frizzle said, Here we are at the town library. We followed her through the wires and into a lamp. We're going right into the light bulb, Wanda cried. Inside the bulb, we squeezed into a very, very, very thin wire, the filament. The filament makes the bulb light up, said Miss Frizzle. Billions and billions of electrons were pushing through the thin filament all at once. That made the filament get white hot. When something is white hot, it glows with light. We scarcely had time to put on our sunglasses before we were in and out of the bulb. Then we were heading away from the library. We didn't even have a chance to check out any books. We traveled down the street through the power line until we came to Joe's Diner. Once inside the restaurant, we entered a toaster. Now we'll observe how electricity makes heat, said the frizz. Follow me into the heating element. The heating element was a coil made of a special kind of wire. When electricity flowed through the wire, it got red hot. The heating element was making some toast, and that reminded us, wasn't it almost lunchtime? Ms. Frizzle didn't stop. Maybe she wasn't hungry. She went out the wire to the main power line again. We will now visit someone's house, she said, making a sharp turn. I wonder whose house, murmured Phoebe. It was Phoebe's house. Her grandma was using a power saw to make a bookcase for Phoebe's room. Oh, good, said Mrs. Frizzle. This gives us a chance to see how the saw is driven by an electric motor. Ms. Frizzle said an electric motor has magnets inside. Remember how we made electric current with a magnet? asked Frizzy. Well, it works the other way too. Electric current can turn a piece of metal into a magnet. This kind of magnet is called an electromagnet. Electromagnets are what make the motor run. Now for a tour of the electric motor, called Ms. Frizzle. We ran through the wire and into the motor. Everything was whirring and shaking in there. A cylinder called a rotor was turning very fast. The rotor was attached to a shaft and the shaft was attached to the saw blade. The spinning rotor made the blade turn so it could cut wood. While we were in the motor, Phoebe's grandma kept sawing. 
She didn't notice the cat creeping up on the birdcage. Watch out, squawked the parrot, but it was too late. The cage fell over, scattering birdseed and other stuff all over the carpet. Phoebe's grandpa came to the rescue with a vacuum cleaner. Come on, kids, called Ms. Frizzle. We have to see this. She led us out of the power saw in one outlet, through the wires in the walls, out another outlet, and into the vacuum cleaner wire. We were getting ready to leave when Grandpa finished vacuuming and turned off the switch. That made a gap in the electric pathway. No more electrons could flow past the gap, so the motor stopped running. We called to Grandpa, but he couldn't hear us. Phoebe was worried. She had to get back in time for an after-school karate class. The rest of us were playing in a soccer game. But what could we do? We were stuck in the switch of a vacuum cleaner. Suddenly, we heard loud barking. Phoebe's puppy had been digging holes in the garden. He came inside all covered with dirt. The first thing he did was to roll around on the carpet. Grandpa had to switch on the vacuum cleaner again. The switch pulled the contacts together and the electric path was complete again. Follow me back to school, kids, yelled Miss Frizzle. We went through the switch, out the wire, to the outside power lines, down the street, and into the wires in the school's walls. We flowed through an outlet and into the wire of a floor waxing machine. The next thing we knew, we were popping out of a hole in the wire's insulation. As soon as we had grown to our regular size, Ms. Frizzle led us back to the classroom. It had been some day. We'd gone through fires and wires. We'd had close encounters with subatomic particles. And we'd seen a new side of home appliances, the inside. Now everything was back to normal in our class. Well, everything except Miss Frizzle, of course. I hope you enjoyed today's book. There was a lot of great information shared, not only on our journey through electricity, but also on the pages of the book. I really encourage you to go back through the video and pause it whenever you see something you'd like to read more thoroughly. I also want to take a moment to talk about the power plant Miss Frizzle's classroom visited, which was a coal burning plant. Coal is a non-renewable resource, and while it is commonly used, it's not good for the environment, at least not as good as renewable resources. PWP currently gets 30% of its power from renewable resources, like solar, wind, and hydroelectric. This is a really great number and a big difference when considering 10 years ago, we got less than 10% from renewable resources. We are committed to increasing that percentage even further though, and by the year 2030, we'll have 60% of our energy from renewable resources. And you can also help us reduce our carbon footprint by saving energy at home. Happy Public Power Week, everybody. I'll see you next time.